Hello everybody and welcome back to Promise Gaming with more RimWorld, Call of Cthulhu. Alright, I've been thinking a bit about base management in between episodes, and there is definitely a lot of room for improvement. One thing that I obviously overlooked, and uh, I have no doubt people will tell me in the comment section, is we should really turn off our electric smelter whenever it is not actively being used. I do want to smelt up a bit more glass just so we can kind of expand the growing area out a teensy weensy bit. But after that, yeah, we should turn it off. It's taking up 700 watts of valuable electricity. Absolutely not worth it. Another thing that I'm thinking about is our heater management since obviously the cold is going to be a much bigger deal than it has been in my previous series. Let's take a look at, let's say, the shrine for example. We've got a heater in here operating at all times trying to keep this place nice and warm when we only use it for like 30 minutes a day. I could turn it off, but another thing we could do is actually just start making this all into one big cont uh, continuous structure by adding in some hallways and some vents so the heaters all work together and at least I'm still getting some value out of this heater for the rest of the base. And that is something I plan on doing. Uh, there's a reason I've been building these, uh, these structures with only a couple of spaces apart so I can easily add in some hallways. That is something I think we are gonna do today as we do get some more stone chunks. I also would like to get some walls set up so we can set up some sort of a kill box. And also, I'm still very much worried about clothing. Now, here's where a fun opportunity just presented itself. If we take a look at wildlife over here, we have some Iramanthian boars. These boars are gargantuan, monstrous wild hogs that inhabit the slopes of Mount Iramanthus, occasionally laying waste to farmers' fields. Basically, they're magical boars. If we kill these guys, we get a lot of uh, meat, but also a lot of special light magical leather, which is a nice leather that actually has pretty darn good insulation built into it and makes pretty decent armor value. So we can see right here, compared to most light leathers, it is quite a bit tougher and better at all types of temperature regulation. That is absolutely something that I want. So these guys might be nice to tame, but I think we're gonna go ahead and kill them. It takes care of food needs for a long time. It gets us some very valuable clothing materials which will allow us to survive for a lot longer. All right, Angle, I want to go ahead and do some hunting. He's going to train these huskies first, which is fine. And now he's going to go and hunt the boars. Okay. Also, we have a, psych a psychic drone, so all male colonists feel some anxiety. I suspect this is going to be a problem for Cameron, who still doesn't have the absolute best mood, but the good news is we have gotten over our Ambrosia withdrawal. So now we don't have to worry about that coming back to bite us, which is huge. I think we should also kill the Lernaean Hydra at some point soon. This is also worth a lot of leather and meat. Also heavy ma magical leather, which is even better than the light version. So we probably want to do that at some point. He's been wandering around for a while. Not been a threat up to this point, but still. All right, let's go ahead and hunt the boar. And the boar is dead. Okay. There's only a 2% chance that these guys go on revenge, so we should be fine. Mist. Uh-oh. What happened with the mist from beyond? A mist has rolled in, thick, steady, and sinister in its approach. Stepping foot within may dislodge lesser mines into spaces between spaces where basalt pillars rise. What does that mean? I assume the mist is across the entire map and we have no choice in the map. Whoa. Wait. Mist stalkers? What the crap is this? Something floating in the mist. It apparently has pigskin leather type. Um... But now I'm concerned. We've got ethereal creatures in the mist wandering around. Oh, scary. Gosh, there are seriously a lot of them. You can see them very clearly as we turn up the speed and how they all move around. They're all congregating in a group. What does that mean? Cameron's upset uh, because of the drone. Not really surprising at all. Uh, I'm not going to worry about any of that. Let's go ahead and start planning out some of these halls I was talking about. We can always break these apart later if we so desire. But let's go ahead and make these out of, I think, slate. Uh, just because, again, it's going to be a better material for us right now. We'll probably get rid of this wall and expand out the room later. I need to create, like, a proper recreation common room and stuff. Like, there's a lot of things I want to do from a base management perspective going forward. But for now, we'll just make this work. Um, this isn't the most efficient thing for me to do, but let's just go ahead and do this. I'm going to tear down these bedrooms at some point. I think that'll be fine. Uh, and, yeah, let's just go ahead and do something like this. We'll place down another door here. And here, and here, and I guess up over here? Sure, bunch of doors and stuff. This at least gets his base fully enclosed. Okay, so we should be a little bit better off as far as our heat management going forward. Uh, it'll be even better once I replace these wooden walls with something actually useful. We got a quest, Keeping Emus. He wants me to take care of two emus, emus for six days. They are his favorite pets and he wants to see the world outside his royal courts. The emus are sick with plague. 
Really? So I'm gonna have to tend to the emus who have plague and keep them alive for six days, is what you're saying. We can probably do this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and accept it on behalf of, let's say, Zealotus. And we're gonna start getting some royal favor for other people. So let's go ahead and do that, and then yeah, let's set down a couple more of the animal sleeping spots, which I think is under furniture, okay? So we'll do this, and I'm gonna have Angle tend to them. They should be okay. The emus have arrived. Here they are. All right, you guys go and sleep over there. That shuttle was shockingly loud. Okay, and then we should probably set up a home zone so these guys stay somewhere nice. I think I am gonna have Angle attack the Hydra. I don't know, it's only like a, what, a 10% chance this guy's gonna fight back and stuff? Also, it should be like super malnourished and stuff, so maybe it's gonna be really slow. I don't know. All I know is I kinda wanna kill it. I mean, just for fun, at the very least, right? Kill a Hydra? Also, we can slow it down if we had to. Be fine. So, no immediate danger. Worst come to worst, I mean, we can just shoot it enough until it's gonna bleed to death. That also would be okay. And if it does decide to attack me, well, this is why we have the Psychic Amplifier on Angle. So, we'll be fine. Go ahead and take a few more shots of this guy. Gosh dang it, with the blinkies. Got it! Oh, God! What just happened? Okay, is it spitting acid? Holy crap! Holy crap! Okay, Angle, run away. You have acidic burns. Right, so, um, I mean, I was hoping that we weren't gonna have this problem, but apparently we do. Let's go ahead and stun it, uh, if we can get in range. Hang on. No, it just fired, so hopefully it can't actually attack me again right away. We need to do a stun, and we need to shoot this thing again. It's gonna bleed out, so if we just have to hide out for a few hours, we can, but the more we can speed this up, the better. Um, we gotta be careful here. Pew, pew, pew. Alright, and probably time to start running again. Keep out of range. Holy crap! Alright, maybe attacking the Hydra was a bad idea. But admit it, it's fun! And also, I want this heavy magical leather, you know? We can make some real good clothes out of that stuff. We could also stun this thing again if we have to. So this is the great thing about being psychic, is there's so many options for us as far as taking on large prey if we want. All right, gonna die in a few hours. Uh, we'll take one more shot. Oh, and it is down, it looks like. Nice. All right, we killed the Hydra. Victory is Angles. Another quest, travelers needing help. A group of four travelers want you to host them a deep water bog for 25 days. The guests are injured and may not be able to walk, but they are expert fighters. Ooh. In 25 days, the shuttle will arrive to collect the guests. If you get them onto the shuttle alive, a new 43-year-old engineer named Blitz will arrive in a transport pod. Hmm. So the only major problem I see with this is we may not be able to properly feed them. That said, even if they are injured, this gets me a lot of medical experience, as long as I can keep them alive, and we get some temporary labor of four extra people. That doesn't seem too bad for 25 days, and then we get an engineer, which is usually a pretty good uh, class. Usually very good at construction, sometimes pretty good at things like intellectual. I kind of think that maybe we should do that. Let's go ahead and first set up a few doors and stuff. We need to get some rooms properly set up. They're going to have to share a room for the time being. Uh, and they may not be very pleased with that, but, you know, so be it. I think I can I think I can live with it. Also, I see we just finished training Horus in the use of hauling. So now we have a hauling dog. That's excellent. We should continue training Horus in things like attack and rescue. That would obviously be quite good for me. But in the meantime, Angle, why don't you go ahead and work on things like these doors? Um... I guess we'll have to go ahead and include some vents in here, just so we can spread out the heat. Of course, the more uh, the more space we're trying to heat up, the less effective it's going to be. So this may not be great in the future, but for now, it's going to have to do. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and see what these guests are going to be able to do. I will accept the quest, and we get four new travelers. Oh god, they are all immediately downed. Okay, we have Flea, Strike, Francis, and Boris. It looks like some of them are magical as well. So, Angle, why don't you come over here, because we're going to have to rescue some people right away. So, let's go ahead and start by rescuing... Okay, we need to get some medical beds, apparently. Hang on. Uh, do -do 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 -do. Why don't you go ahead and work on the beds, then? Um, Zelidus, why don't you go gather... Who's the most injured? Who's the most in, in, at risk of death? It looks like none of them are at immediate risk of death, so I think we're going to be okay. So, why don't you go ahead and rescue Flea to start, while Angle goes and builds these beds, just so we have some medical space. Okay. And then Cameron, you're going to go and rescue, let's say, Boris. Angle, continue working on some more beds. Okay. I want to see what these guys' skills are in just a second, but let's let's work on this one step at a time here. Um, now, Angle, go work on this bed as well, and then we'll have you work on the door. Okay. 
Uh, Zelotus, go ahead and rescue Francis. Okay, so these guys are all going to be taken care of, and now we have a proper bet. All right, so let's see what these guys are capable of doing. So, Flea, you are a tech enthusiast AI programmer. That is amazing intellectual skill. You better believe I'm going to take advantage of that. Also, you are a warlock and a wimp. You're a wimpy warlock. <laughs> I like that. You're incapable of working on plants. Great crafting skill. Very good shot. This is awesome. I'm going to use that, no doubt about it. Strike. You are a very good shot and not much else. You're a necromancer. You fall asleep quickly and you are ugly. So you're not going to be great. You were actually in a coma for most of your childhood. <laughs> Awful. Francis, a vengeful child and banished. That's it. That's your state, not your job, but okay. Chemical interest, magically gifted, sanguine, good in plants. Okay, we can make use of you for farming. Boris, a good crafter, a good miner. Passion for construction, though not particularly good. So we'll use you for a lot of crafting and mining jobs. Yeah, this is awesome. We temporarily get four more people that I can absolutely make use of. I love it. And Angle is throwing a party to celebrate, I guess. Well, if these guys can get up, we'll absolutely make use of that. Let's go ahead and turn off the medical area here. Okay. So, awesome. We're going to have so much extra productivity for a little while. Um, and the other cool thing is we might even be able to induct these guys into the cult. I mean, yeah, they're going to leave. But maybe they go out and they spread the cult to everybody else across the world. This actually might become a global religion. I don't think that's actually implemented in the game. But from a lore perspective, I love the idea. I don't know if you can hear this. There are weird whispers. Oh, it's coming from the obelisk. Oh, that's what it is. I have never noticed up to this point, but there are actually strange whispers coming from the obelisk. <laughs> well, that's that's uh, both creepy and awesome at the same time. All right, we finished researching the electric stone cutting, which is awesome. We're going to go ahead and start working on our microelectronics. Since we have a level 20 researcher, I don't see why the heck not. We should also go ahead and start getting rid of things like this wooden table and start building up a proper dining room because we actually have enough people to justify this now. So let's go to our furniture. Um, we're going to do probably just a long table like so. Rotate this around. So this should be fine. You are fine, actually. Don't need to, don't need to redo that. Just reinstall you. Um... Something like this is probably okay. So, all right. Now, I'm not going to bother renaming these guys because they're not sticking around. I consider these to be temporary members of the colony, so I don't think that they deserve to get any special names. We don't want to get emotionally attached to people who I know are going to leave me. Still, it is certainly pretty cool that this is going to happen. As long as we can keep their moods up. If these guys go nuts, we're going to have some serious issues. Witness an ominous sermon. Yeah, because their cult-mindedness is kind of on the low side. In fact, I'm pretty sure most of these guys were hostile to begin with. So... Uh, it may take a little while to convince them, but once we actually do make them into proper members of the cult, I think they're going to get a lot happier. Ah, good. The shuttle has arrived to pick up the emus that we don't want to feed anymore. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and accept that. Both of the emus will now be assigned to go into the shuttle. Uh, we probably should tell them that they are no longer restricted to go into Area 1, so they should be able to leave. I say that, and then the emus wandering around going nowhere. I swear to God, if you get struck by lightning, I'm going to get very, very angry about that. Uh, and now Boris is wandering around in his psychotic days. Well, that's probably fine. Um, Engel's not getting a lot of sleep, nor is he building, like, half of the things that I want him to. Francis is finally healed up. Well, that's good, at least. Uh, is this assigned to anybody in particular, Boris? That's fine. So you no longer need to be medical, and we'll go ahead and assign you for Francis so he actually has a bed. Okay, so he's hauling the emu to the shuttle. Yep. <laughs> Francis wakes up and he's like, I now know what I must do. Grab the emu and run! Which is great. The shuttle is loaded with the cargo and ready to go. All right, send it off. And we finish with our quest, which means that Zelotus has now gained the freeholder title in the Empire. Hooray! Oh, we actually don't even have enough pew space for everybody to sit in on the, uh, the sermons anymore. We should go ahead and fix that. Let's add in a couple more of these linkable pews. All right, perfect. So these guys are going to witness some onerous sermons and stuff, I know. But we should see their cult mindedness is going up. Perfect. And we have an eclipse. Oh, okay. Well, good news is we are not relying on anything uh, solar, so I don't think I'm particularly worried about that. And the hallways are done, which means we can properly get the ceilings on all of this, and boom, we have a roof, which means now we're not going to have to deal with any snow, and we should be able to start retaining a lot more of our heat. That's great. I also have a lot of idle colonists with nothing to do. Uh, oof, boy, what should we do with all of them? Well, um, I guess this is a good time to go ahead and just mine a lot of stuff out, get a lot of other resources, etc. We should probably go ahead and set up some big crafting jobs. What can we do for some production here? Art? We could start making some art. 
Um, I think we should go ahead and replace this with an electric stone cutter's table. So let's go ahead and deconstruct you. I do want to get a proper production room with tool cabinets in the future, but for now we'll do without it. Fish, I suppose, is something we could do if we want to try getting some uh, food, which is not a bad idea per se, so okay. Sure, we'll set up a fishing pier just so people have something to do there. Uh, nutrient paste, hoppers, blah, 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 smithy, no, machining tables. Mm, I don't think we need that right now. Yeah, let's go ahead and set up a quick art bench in case we decide we want to do some art. Um, what else should we do, though? I don't think there's a whole lot more we need to do aside from going ahead and just upgrading the bench. Like, now is the perfect time to do that. A griffin self-tamed. Oh, sweet. Okay. Um, great. What are we going to do with the griffin? Uh, we can train it to haul. Sure, I guess. What do you What do you eat, exactly? Raw meat, corpses, animal products, meals, processed foods, and kibble. Do you want to keep a griffin, or do I want to just go ahead and slaughter the thing? I mean... I guess we should hold on to it for now. There are plenty more griffins for me to hunt. So let's not worry about all that right now. Let's just go ahead and hunt the other griffins. And we'll hold on to it. I mean, yeah, why not? We'll just go ahead and do that. Maybe we can train it to be a really cool hauler. Yeah, we're doing ourselves another sermon over here. I mean, sure as heck, we're going to get these guys up to full cult mindedness, and we're going to send them out in the world to uh, spread the good news. This is absolutely hilarious. And Flea has been initiated into the cult. Cool, we have a warlock on our side. Of course the warlock would be the first one to join. Makes perfect sense. I suppose one thing we should do, since we have so many colonists that we're now considered to have a very high wealth value, is make sure that everyone has some sort of weapon. So let's go to production here, and uh, is it a smithy, technically, where you can make bows? It wouldn't make a lot of sense, but that might actually be the case. Uh, let's try setting one up. Angle, uh, you're currently hunting the griffin. That's probably fine. Nope, we're actually going to do a sermon instead. Okay, that's also fine. Praying to Dagon, done. Consuming rice, no. Um, why, why is Zealotus not making any meals? Cook some stinking food. People are eating raw stuff now. A feline presence. Mewling sounds pierce the silence. Oh, great. Okay. Well, um, we've got cats on the way. That's not good. All right. Smithy, can we create some bows? Yes. We can make short bows. They're not especially good. Also, you can make glass here. I didn't know that. Uh, but at least it's something. And who is our guy who's good at crafting now? Boris. Boris is in a sad state, so there's nothing they can do at the moment. I'm going to have Flea, who is our programmer for research, go ahead and start working on this. Let's start making some bows for everybody, because this could end up being really bad. Like, I don't know what this ominous uh, cat is going to predict for us, but it could be a problem. Cameron, what's wrong? Cameron is being attacked by a black cat. Oh, dude. Okay. Run. We got a problem. We got a cat actually attacking us. I thought that it was just an omen, but we're literally being scratched to death by a freaking cat. Okay, Cameron, are you going to be able to get away from this? You got some scratches and stuff. Otherwise, not too bad. Run through the marsh. Angle's on the way. Come on. Let's hurry up and get over here. I got to save him. Lose the cat in the marsh. The cat's fast, unfortunately. I think he's going to be fine. He's just getting a lot of scratches. He's bleeding out a little bit. Okay, now we're outrunning the cat slightly thanks to the marsh. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Where the heck is Angle? Okay, Angle's on the way. It's almost there. Enough that we should be able to shoot the darn thing. Come on. A little bit closer. And shoot the cat. Okay, cat's down, which means it should be going a lot slower now that we've shot through its leg. You're going to run away and get medical treatment while Angle takes care of the stupid thing for you, okay? There we go. Cat's got nothing. Lost its eye, so we can't even see where it's going anymore. Perfect. Thank you, Angle. Well done. Okay. Now, I know I could have made the recurve bows, and I do think these are better, but I mostly just wanted to have something, because I didn't know what that cat was going to mean. Uh, we should go ahead and make something like a mace and stuff as well, just so that Boris has some sort of a weapon. I assume they're going to take the weapons with them when they do eventually leave. And a griffin is attacking us. Okay, um... Where? Strike apparently started hunting the griffin. Is the griffin close to death? It's going to die in a few hours. I think that now is the time to just run. How fast is the griffin? Pretty fast, but actually we're fine. Never mind. You're, you're okay. Go ahead and just take out the griffin. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. That is a lot of blood over here, by the way. Holy crud. Okay, run away. 
There we go. Got another good hit off, and we are outrunning it, so it's going to die off. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Uh, no big deal there. Okay. So, with four new colonist members, with the base properly enclosed off with some hallways and heat all being used more effectively, I think we are in a pretty darn good position. The biggest thing is, while I have these four people, we need to find a way to make good use of them. That's going to require a lot of research, certainly, but also a whole lot of building and crafting. Like, as, as much as we can get in the next, like, 20 days or whatever it is that's left. So, that's going to be a fun challenge for us. After that, we are going to get a new member to the colony, a civil engineer, who I will make a permanent addition and give a proper name. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.